Hello and welcome to the Geeky Birmingham Show, live here at ICE Birmingham 2018 here at the Birmingham Conference Exhibition Centre. Uh, join us, we'll be chatting to a few of the artists, we'll be having some highlights from our Beano at 80 panel, and we'll catch back here with you in a little bit. <laughs> Excitingly, I've just started drawing Minnie the Minx, uh, which is one that people will actually have heard of when I tell them that I draw them. Um, I've been into comics since I was very, very small. There's never been a time in my life where I haven't had comics around me. Um, they've always been tremendously influential on me. Uh, I basically just love funny fiction, and comics is the best delivery system for it. Um, and since I've become a professional comic artist, I've started coming to uh, conventions whenever I can. I love to meet other comics fans. It's really nice to get some direct feedback about what my work means to them. Because um, normally, as a comic artist, you're just at home, you know, on your own or with your cats. Not very great, great at conversation. So you kind of work in this little bubble. So actually speaking to comics fans is, is really brilliant and I'm glad to have the chance to do it. Um, and I very much hope all the comics fans who have uh, come to uh, ICE this weekend have had a brilliant time, because I definitely have. Uh, you can find me online, um, basically uh, at Victorian Clam is my handle on pretty much all social media. Um, I have a website, laurahowell.co.uk. It is in chronic need of updating, um, but if you want to see what I was drawing up to about 2014, then that's the place to go. Um, yeah, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and there, Victorian Clan. <laughs> Beano at 80's panel. Uh, I'm Keith, that's Ryan. We're geeky, but we're honoured uh, to host this panel and we've got uh, a set of wonderful guests for our first official uh, panel. So we've got uh, Lou Stringer, uh, Nigel Parkinson, Hunt Emerson and Laura Howe, who are um, legendary in terms of uh, the British comic scene and the Beano itself. Um, so do, does anybody read the Beano or have re read the Beano in the past? A few of you, so you've got a bit of knowledge. Uh, so you know that this year, uh, Beano is celebrating its 80th uh, anniversary, so it was published, first published by DC Thompson back in 1958. Um, the first person to ask, were we in the first issue? <laughs> Step outside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, it's, a, it's a staple of many school kids' early years, those kind of like... Uh, I think it's more than likely the, probably the first comic you'll pick up. Yes, that's what we designed it for. So yeah, so it's kind of like so it's it's oh, it's the right. There's a panel there. <laughs> so it's the home of many kind of famous characters, people you'll have heard of, people like Dennis the Menace, Minnie the Minx, Bash Street Kids, Numb Schools, Roger the Dodger, Billy Wiz, uh, and of course Nash the Dog. Uh, but yeah, we'd we just like to say thank you very much to all four of you for taking thank the time you. to come and talk to us about the 80th anniversary of being So if you are around the rest of the afternoon, yeah. all four of our wonderful artists are upstairs on the, on the next floor. So it's your perfect opportunity to go and grab your own piece of original art from, of, from these characters. That's a good idea. Just to go and 
Go and say hello, go and grab. I know mean, Nigel's got some uh, Dennis the Menace badges. I yeah. think one of you's already got one. They're I should have got one myself. They're free badges. Um, but yeah, so if you could just get a round of applause for Nigel, you know Laura, and Lou, and Hunt. You know it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Jason Cobley and James Gray, who have launched their book Amnesia Agents here at Ice Birmingham 2018 today. Gentlemen, do you want to describe what the book's a bit about? Well, yes, but it's based around the idea that there's a physical place that your memories go to. So when you forget something or you forget a person, it goes to this physical other dimension called Echo. Um, and Amnesia Agents, their job is to track down missing memories or people that have gone missing and been forgotten who shouldn't have been. So this was based on one of your novels originally, what made you yeah, decide to Yeah, I originally um, uh, planned to write it as a novel, it ended up being quite a yeah. short novel, um, but really we took a look at that and thought actually, you know, this, is, this has got everything that we need for a really good comic, uh, it's got action, it's got adventure, it's got a bit of horror, a bit of sci-fi in it, um, and uh, so we went for the visuals, because um, ultimately it's, uh, it's a visual story really. And that's where James came on board. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been most enjoyable. It's been a longer job for me. I'm used to five page pages. Yeah. And, yeah. and James came along with a 47 page. It was 48. Yeah, we yeah, get a page we, off we it. We cut one off, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it's been a, lot, been a lot of fun. And, uh, and I hope people like it. Because yeah. uh, I've really enjoyed doing it. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the approach you tried to take with it was that to, to imagine this, that this was kind of it's self-enclosed, but as if it's the pilot episode of a TV series, so that you can take it on its own, but also there's scope in there for, for lots more cases for them to investigate, and so on and so on. So, yeah. I mean, one of the things I loved about the story is you've got this fantastical world yeah. hidden under pretty much what's a normal English lifestyle, yeah. and it, it gives me that feel of kind of like a Neil Gaiman Neverwhere kind of feel, where yeah. you have this mirror world hidden behind. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Was, does that kind of like a big impact with how you decided to write the story was that where you started off with yeah that's right I wanted to wanted to be set in the real world um, uh, and, what, and what I wanted to create was the idea that there is yeah there's something that's going on all the time and because anybody can become an amnesia agent you can be recruited just like that uh, and then when you've done your job you can be you can forget that it ever happened at all memories are overwritten and restored so that it could be happening to us all the time. Mm -hmm. So we just don't know because we keep forgetting about it. It just happened, so, Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, yeah, exactly. It's a kind of a two worlds intersecting. Mm -hmm. And it was funded by a successful Kickstarter back in April. Yeah. I mean, for volume two, would we be looking for a Kickstarter to be possibly coming soon? Well, we, we, we've been kicking around ideas. Some of the ideas we've got are uh, perhaps um, some shorter strips that might be part of an anthology. Um, but certainly the, there are lots of ideas there and we, we're kind of kicking around what we're going to do with with, with the volume two. It may not be as long as the next one perhaps, but... There's going to be more um, in one form yeah, or another. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, definitely yeah. going to be more stories, yeah. And James, your artwork yeah. so beautiful in it. I mean, how do you get that depth of colour and shade? Um, no, yeah. no colour, but shading to give you that exact feeling of colour? Blood, sweat and tears. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, yeah. I, I've done, not done that much grayscale comic work in yeah. fact a lot of comic work full stop to be honest you might not think that's the case but yeah. I, I come from a motorsport art background uh, but I've always done it in a sort of a comic -y feel so I just transferred that graphic designy look into grayscale and it just tended to just came out nicely as well I did have to do the lettering as well but 
I'll let that one slide. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 I think we got away with it. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, where can we find you guys online if people can't attend ICE today? Where can they purchase the book or find more of your works? Uh, okay, so I've got I've got a couple of blogs. One is writingcobblers.blogspot.co.uk. That's probably the easiest place. Or you can find me on Twitter at uh, Jason M. Cobbley on Twitter and go from there. And as for me, at Quaggan Jim Gray, Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant, thanks very much for joining us today. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.